So, the Combat Patrol magazine then. But the reason these things even exist is to have a really good deal one time and then make up for that really good deal another time. Yeah. Am I actually saving money or am I just spending money on stuff I didn't want? Did you feel like it was a good deal? Um... This podcast is brought to you by us. If you're a fan of the show and you want to support us, then you should know that we have dropped some really cool merch on the Siege Studios shop. We've got several shirt designs with this really cool graphic on it. I've been wearing mine all of the time for months now, and I genuinely get compliments constantly from people who have absolutely no idea what Warhammer is. The shirts are really nice, high quality cotton, and everything is in stock and dispatched by us. None of that print to order nonsense. So if you want to check out the designs for yourself and see the other merch that we have on the shop, head to the link in this episode's description or go to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. And if you use the code POD10 at checkout, you'll save 10% and you'll get a free sticker pack with your order. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pay Perspective, episode 66. The Combat Patrol magazines are upon us, and we're going to be talking about if they're actually a ripoff or not. But in other news, first of all, of course, some little uh, updates. James, we had a hobby hangout a couple of days ago. Yes, we did. It was good. It was uh, good to have a natter and uh, a paint. Well, I was building, but you you were painting. I think with uh, a bit of a, a bit of a extreme uh, wrist pain by the by the, uh, by, the by the. Uh, <laughs> I was doing I was doing a live demo. Oh, so you're milking it on the live it. on the hobby oh, hangout? Yeah, well. yeah, he was fully. Non stop. Yeah. He won't stop banging on about his wrist. Like we get it. Like he's parading around with his with his <laughs> thing on his wrist. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it was good. It was good. Uh, it was good to just chat to people and uh, just talk about. Which was, I think we spoke about pretty much everything hobby related you can think of. Oh, we've done the full, the full full rotation of all the, <laughs> all the mainstay topics. The big thing was um, we ended up going back down into, you know, you know how ages ago we've done the like film, uh, Warhammer like fan film casting. Oh, yeah. yeah. When, uh, we only there was, did that once, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. 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 Like but we've we do done yeah. a solid hour of just coming up with movie ideas related to Warhammer and who would be in them. I think I think Danny DeVito as Angron was quite a, was quite a, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it was quite a good one. Um, yeah, yeah good that one. was good. I can't remember his name. I've forgotten his name. Ever. Who's the villain in one of the Bond films that's got the scarred eye? I can't remember the actor. He's a he's a, he's a Swede, I think he's a Swedish guy. Um, oh. You're out of my zone with Bond, mate. I've seen yeah, there, two of them, I think. Yeah, there's a well, Daniel uh, Craig. <laughs> yeah, it's not Daniel Craig. Yeah, no, we were we were talking about who could play like different, obviously Primarchs and different characters, and um, and uh, I think that we were talking about Erebus, and there was someone that I it was an actor that I said I can't remember his name. That's going to absolutely drive me nuts. But there was an actor that I suggested as Erebus, and it actually worked out pretty well. well. Frankie Boyle, I think you was that. You I mean, Frankie Boyle would be amazing. That's who you but, said yeah. last time, <laughs> Frankie Boyle was Erebus. Was that Erebus? Was, that was Erebus. Boyle? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Frankie Boyle was Erebus. Yeah. It was great. Why are you bothering suggesting anyone else? That one You've went already completed really that. Well. Yeah, no, I guess so. I guess so. But yeah, um, but no, I just yeah, there was another actor, but I've forgotten his name. So yeah, fair play. If anyone knows, scarred eye villain <laughs> from. Bond yeah, film. It's, 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 it's the guy. It's the guy that plays cards across the table. It's in, it's in Casino Royale. Mads Mikkelsen. That's the one. Mads Nicholson. Yeah. Or however you say, I probably butchered yeah. it with some he, the English yeah. pronunciation. But that's uh, it. Yeah. He would be. Um, I think he would play a really good era. So if you imagine him with a shaved head, with like, like loads of Colchisian tattoos all over his head, I think he'd be. I think he'd be pretty cool. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen him with a shaved head. I don't know if he's one of them people that would look more menacing or less menacing with a shaved head. Like I don't think. I don't know if he would pull off a shaved head. Yeah, I don't know. Not. But I think Frankie I just, Boyle, I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that, like the, the casting table, like that, the, the casting like director in the meeting, and they're like, we're down to these last two, but we just can't decide who. We just can't decide who. And it's it's Frankie Boyle's headshot and Mads Bickle's headshot. <laughs> they're just so perfect. We can't split it between them. Yeah. No, I just thought either. Well, I, yeah, Frankie Boyle, I forgot about. But yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, either. we'll have to do one of those film casting uh, that was great. segments. That, again I that think. was that was great that time how's the um the new gaff going Joe? well i have a hobby space now hey. so i can actually i can be on the next so now you've got up. no excuses for when i say what have you painted this week and you go nothing my excuse this week is <laughs> um, prepared is actually that i've been building i've been solid building because i've got um my first game of 40k at the weekend Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. So, so you're going to speed paint your army in a week, obviously. It's uh, going to all be done by I've, Friday. I'm not playing with a painted army. Uh, my two options were... Play or don't play. I'm either going to try and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm either going to try and... Uh, my, yeah, my aim was to just... Because it's our first game, I think we're all... We'll, we're being pretty chill about it. We want to see 
see what's up and see what we like. And I don't want to spend ages painting something that I might not use, especially if it's just for gaming, uh, if it's not like a passion project for painting. So we're doing, uh, yeah, a little bit of an unpainted introduction game. So I'm just building everything at the minute. Doing Barely what? even cleaning it. I'm just trying to get a thousand points ready for Sunday. You're doing a thousand points for your yeah. first game. It's a nice size yeah. game. It's good to yeah. Have you and been I... like scrubbing up on the rules? Are you like pre-preparing? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Rule books, rule books on the side the whole time. Have you That's seen it. Have you seen that meme where it's like uh, girls versus guys preparing, and it's how to fly less than one. The guys <laughs> yeah. in the fighting chair. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, what I've been doing is I've been practicing my sort of like going up to other people's tables and going, "Excuse me, mate, just quit." Like, what? What is this the rule? Is this the right rule? Like, that, that's my go-to. Just try and ask some, ask someone else. But I think. No, we're gonna we're we're on the same, you know, me and me and my friend who we're playing, uh who I'm playing with, we're on the same level, like we don't know what's going on. Is so, it just you and him who are doing this whole like, Sunday, 40k yeah. thing? Or have you no, got a No, we've got like a, we've got a group, we've got a group, uh it's about four or five of us. Okay. But there's only only us two. Where are they at with their armies? Further than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Remember when you said what was it you said the other week? You was like, Oh, I'm chill. I am I'm chill. So chill. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. by Sunday, I'm gonna have built so much so much more than you i i'm so chill i'm so chill about it like how far ahead are you how many models have you painted six models whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. it's six whoa, whoa, you whoa. didn't include hang the on, test hang model on, back it up back it up i've got six finished models to very high standard by the there way you go. yeah i've also got oh well, uh, well standard you're, you're dragging standard into it now. Yeah, yeah it's relevant. You know, it's, yeah, relevant. it's not relevant. It's not relevant. <laughs> that was never. That okay. was never in the. Equation. Right. Well, regards to that, I'm about to finish the first five intercessors. Oh, so he's he's actually batch painting a little bit. Now. Uh, there is. I'm batch painting. Even James was stumped actually that I was batch painting. I was, I doing was, I was pretty hangout. surprised. I was like, yeah. I, I was mid taking mold lines off, and I looked up, and he had like five in front of him, all in batch. I was like, oh, I was like, is that George? Batch painting. Mate, I've, like, I've, like, I've yeah. got like converted bits. I'm using my upgrade sprues. I'm going all out. I can't be doing that. No <laughs> pouches, no upgrades, nothing. Your Marines aren't going to have weapons. It's just going to be guys just stood <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> I was tempted to do the, uh, you ever see the person who had Necrons just made out of sprue bits? Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> I was tempted to just do that, to be honest. Um, yeah, so by Sunday, I'll have a, an army built, at least. A thousand points built. What's your plan for painting them? Have you got a plan? Green. <laughs> right, okay, cheers. Can um, we clear that up? Next green. question. No, here is here is the problem. I am, I've gone back and forth. I As I have on air on this podcast, gone back and forth. I have no idea what painting style I prefer or what one I want to get better at and what one... I want to use this army using Quips's tip. Uh, of, of, Elaborate on the styles then. So what are the front runners? What sort of looks? Obviously the heavy metal mm -hmm. style, which you two... Um, Live, eat, sleep, breathe. Yeah, go for. So I get that drilled into me on a daily basis. <laughs> um, With a default. And then the more... Like a, like a more... <laughs> The worst part is you don't even use a DeWalt. It doesn't even use it. It uses the bloody Bosch. I, yeah. I, 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 I switch between the two. I'd have a DeWalt one day and a Bosch the next day. Also, by Bosch the way, sniper. like Bosch in the power tools sphere is the most like Audi pick. Like, yeah, but DeWalt. I think that's the point is because the DeWalt would be too, even he knows the DeWalt would be too I've much. used a DeWalt and it, and, and it was a bit much. Yeah. yeah. Maybe so. that's where I went wrong because I did use a excuse DeWalt. Excuse me. Excuse yeah. me. You drill snob. Bosch is all right, actually. Thank you very much. Uh, Screw on that. <laughs> to be fair, James, you're not really the connoisseur of DIY because going off the state of these shelves behind us, they're I not really hey, going to hold you hey, as the pinnacle of power. The screws knowledge. in the wall are great. The fixings are coming loose. So, so yeah. Don't, don't let James do any DIY. Yeah. Do you know what made me laugh? We, we'll circle back around to what I was just saying, but do you know what made me laugh when Quips posted like a selfie of like behind the scenes and you saw the the, the shoddy, <laughs> shoddy paintwork at the, the top of the wall. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm gonna put a photo yeah. of it. Okay, listen. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have listen, to. listen. I had a limited amount of time to get the walls painted for this set. All right, okay. So you decided the quickest way to do it would be to use your face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. I mean, uh, there is a finger mark up there. Where I tried to get yeah, anyway. But as professional like, painter. You should yeah. before you take the picture. Good on you should do like a hand print <laughs> like at the top. Good on like, This is what he's done. Good on miniatures. Not so much on walls. You paint yeah. tiny, precise. 
tiny miniature yeah. painting to very high standards Look, and then you give them a whole wall with I a straight had, line. I so had your one job. a couple of hours to get the set painted. I've done a good By job. A couple of hours, he means a weekend. Yeah, no, it's, it's not it's, even... It's a couple of hours. Not even edge highlighted. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so the different styles. like we've, we, we, We've spoken about on loads. Like I don't know whether to go for a more realistic, uh, typical airbrushy, um, you know, more like our warrior style, yeah, yeah. for example. Yeah. Um, or like the full heavy metal style, or the one that I the one that I struggle with. I don't know if I could like fully go on. You know how people do just want to like bang stuff out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could fully go down that. There's route. a line because I don't know if I'd be happy with it at the mm -hmm. end. But then I don't know. Is the like because when we had that episode with Peachy, that kind of changed my perspective on that a little bit because he was talking about how. It's like the spectacle. If the aim is force, the, yeah. the aim is yeah, getting the army done, and that's what your goal is, and that's what you're looking forward to, then the then individual. the individual models don't matter as much. But it depends, I guess. If that's what I'm struggling on, I'm struggling. If is my aim use this to become a better painter, paint some models that I'm really proud of, or is it? I want to play some games? Yeah, it can be both as well. I think. Yeah, I yeah, think it can yeah. be. I think that's where we differ. Obviously, it's like my. Oh, I couldn't care less. Yours, is, game yours is a purely full a painting project, painting project yeah. and that's why I'm going to absolutely smoke you and have an army before you. <laughs> um, but like, because even if mine was a painting project, I'd have it done quite <laughs> um, What What style do you think would be the slowest for you? I think you should do that one. Really savour the moment, Joe. Uh, I, love, I love the ploy there. To try I it. think slap chop, probably the slowest for me. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I should probably go for that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have done, know. Have you done any... Like what styles have you been painting in previously? Because the qu the cool thing about the Quipster episode was him talking about like learning new techniques through yeah. painting armies. So My, if like, you're not well versed in like doing slap shop or doing like the airbrush thing or whatever. Yeah, I'm definitely not. Like I'm definitely more, if I was just going to, you put a model in front of me now and I had to paint it, it would be some, I, I really like the idea of like a middle ground between the more realistic um, volumetric thing and the heavy metal style. And I think we've spoke before about some box art models having that middle ground. Well, just do just do the airbrush work and do a single edge on everything. Yeah, but just shift the, shift the saturation and the edge. And then like maybe that. on characters could take it a bit do further. More, yeah, but like um, I think when I spoke about the uh, what's the town model that you painted, Dark Strider. Like the box art for that felt the the box art paint job for that felt not full heavy metal. I know what you mean. It, yeah, it was a bit more reserved and i like that as a goal i think that is what i would like a really reserved heavy metal style probably um the lion as well has a good example of that i think because there's so much like glazing and there's volumetric bits on it even though it's painted in heavy metal style that yeah makes it's sense. quite different max yeah. painted max painted um, the lion as well i think obviously yeah so obviously like incredible painters i'm not just going to bosh out an army of them but like that in terms of a goal i think because i haven't got a goal of like you're like I want to paint like this Darren Latham model from the nineties or whatever. Like that's your I, I want my thing to look like that, and you, you have like the current box art as like I want my thing to look like that. Mm -hmm. I haven't really had that, so I don't know. Yeah, what yeah. To, I don't know what my starter version would look like because I don't know where I'm going, kind of thing. Does that make sense? Have you got much of a plan for sort of come to a conclusion on that? You're going to like mood board it? You're going to do some like research? <laughs> Get or... the Trello out. I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think just if I had to like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I, actually, I really don't know. I'm actually not going to say this to take the piss and slow down. I'm being serious. Doing a couple of test models in like each style. Here we go. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Always a competition in mind because he's got his wrist as well. Yeah. He's slowing himself he's like, down. I'm already slow. Yeah. Now I can't but paint as quick. He's like, what I think you should do is join a football league and be in goal. Right, yeah. and then break your wrist. That's what he's. That's what he's suggesting. Take up an extreme me. sport. I think I brought yeah. this up like twice ever. No, I'm banging on about it. <laughs> <one stop>. um, <laughs> you could paint. You could paint a, a quick, like not even like full. You haven't got to paint the back of it. Just like just do a few panels. Yeah, and just see yeah. If you enjoy even, just, if you enjoy painting it as well, because if you're gonna have to do a whole army of it, if you go, oh, I really like the look of this realistic that's, style. That's part and you of find it. it miserable. Do, do then, what we said. Paint shoulder pads. Like I did for the exemplars, just do a couple of test pads, yeah. test bits, just like the, as the different yeah. kind of styles. Like classic heavy metal leg. Oh yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think that maybe that's what I need to do. Do some tests. I'm so like 
out of practice with painting anyway. Like I haven't painted properly in ages. Um, so, and even the last thing I painted was a Underworld's warband, which is, and doesn't have a single bit of like, well, it has a tiny bit of like armor plating on it. It's all like skin and stuff. So it's completely different to painting Space Marine army. So ultimately yeah. it's the army that you love the most and the faction that you love the most. So should enjoy doing should it. Enjoy doing yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I just don't yeah. know what my version of that is yet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do think like just test painting a few bits. Yeah. It'll totally give you an idea for like what you enjoy, the look you like. Because in your head it might be like, oh, this would be like perfect. And you get your recipe written down and you do it and you're like, yeah. 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 I think maybe maybe that's what I'll do. Um because yeah. I'll already have a thousand points built, so I'll have some time to kill, I guess. <laughs> Because uh, you know, George like a couple gonna, of victories, George ain't gonna, George ain't gonna, <laughs> ain't gonna uh, catch up to that anytime soon. So, talking of, how's the Maldians? Maldians, uh, I've the Maldians oh, oh, are the one. On, the Maldians on. are the one that's in this conversation. I will not accept exemplars of siege. Oh, don't worry, uh, you don't have to accept them exemplars of siege because James has decided to start Primaris Blood Angels Army. So no, I, that was on the cards anyway. That was, that on, the was on the cards. It's always anyway. been on the cards. You yeah. say that's, it like you that's say the it like, earliest one. Yeah, you say it. You say it like it's like some newfangled thing. It's not. It. That's the earliest one of the three. Armies. It was all exemplars of siege. Now he's kit bashing blood angels. I don't know. What to yeah, do. I have a few things. On it was the, all Mordians at one point. We had have, tanks showing up every week. Is yeah. there? Is well, the Mordians is the one that's in this uh, challenge. This challenge. Yeah. I will not accept any talk of blood angels. No, he can't show up with like an exemplars of siege army. Like, see, I did it. <laughs> There's a, a Maudian head on one of the faces. Yeah. He's like, look, it's Maudians. Um Is there first any... squad? First squad of Maudians is all blocked in, shaded, and has first highlight stage on it. Ooh. How many so is in the first squad? Eight normal infantry, two heavy weapon team team members, oh. and the heavy weapon. It's catching up to you. Picks or it didn't happen. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is uh, there on the exemplars and, and blood angel stuff? Yes, because you're obviously now committing yourself to two. I've got four space things. I've got armies. four things on the go at the minute. Why is it four? What was three? Mordians, exemplars, blood angels, and GD. Oh, and oh yeah, there's another one actually. Do you know about the other the what's plan? The, other? the plan for when, oh, I don't know if you want to no, talk that? about that actually the other army that you told me you want to do. Oh yeah, but that's that's that's, that's after that's this after, is after this. He's yeah. got his next army plan oh, for good. when for when these for when these are finished. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've got, He's got I've, his I have plus golden plus golden demon in October, which is ticking away. Yeah, so. I've got. I'm only. I'm only doing two entries. I'm literally just doing, just doing two. So one of them is already. Are you, are you like sharing what they are? Yeah, yeah are I'm happy to. Well, I'll, I'll happy to do it. So one of them I won't because it's not. I want it to. It's something I want to just a do. Reveal. With yeah, reveal. Um, one of them is obviously the Marty. So I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be just doing all the things on him that I want to finish because he wasn't. I was happy where it got to for, for obviously for the preview and everything, but there's a lot of things that I can see on it that I'm like, I want to change that. Like I've only done one blood, one of the blood drops exactly how I want to do all of them and things like that. So I just yeah. want to, yeah, I want There's lots of things I want to Paying do. for competitions, a whole different kind yeah. of fish, isn't it? Yeah. So. But maybe we could do an episode a little bit down the line about like a bit closer to GD about your Yeah, sure. Yeah, if you want. Yeah. I've got, I've got, like I'll say the other one I'm doing is uh, something a bit different than I normally would do. So I'm just doing something. Uh, it's a very old model, but I'm doing, I'm, giving it a modern paint job so tell you what we should do we should maybe record one just before gd mm -hmm. and then you can talk about it and then it won't come out till after yeah that's fine yeah yeah. Um, yeah so it would have been revealed then at that point we frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world-class and award-winning artists teaching is something that all of the team here at siege are very passionate about and we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Seed Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalogue of over 300 step-by-step -step tutorials covering a huge variety of colour schemes, miniatures, painting styles and techniques, from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy-to-follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you want to take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios. Should we do some listeners comments? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, first of all though, uh, have you noticed we're zeroing in on 50,000 subscribers? We're getting there. We're getting there. So we need your help because we've noticed that 40.6% of you 
watch this podcast every single week but aren't subscribed. What are you doing? You're killing us. <laughs> do us a solid. Hit the button down below. It takes two seconds. Do so us, easy. Do us a solid. I've never heard anyone say that. Well, do us, do a, us solid. a solid. You yeah. ever heard that? No. Heard that. That's the thing people say. Yeah, that's no. definitely Well, do thing. us a solid. <laughs> Hit the button. Uh, first question comes from uh, Sam's Butterscotch, who says, I'm curious if George uses the by now established Evie Archive recipe for his Blood Angels, or if there's any secret sauce he uses for his reds. Mm. Uh, I do like the Evi Archive. It's a great website. Check it out. If you haven't seen it before, just Google Evi Archive. It's like loads of it's great. Uh, like official heavy metal recipes for like box art stuff. Well, technically unofficial. Unofficial, but you know, yeah. if you know, you know. Yeah. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would say mine is not, uh, I don't think, the one on there. Uh, it's pretty close, if not. But I'm a man of the people. So tell you what, as you've been listening to the podcast and th as you hit the subscribe button, uh, I'll throw on screen right now my Blood Angels recipe. Why not? There you go. There it is. Have it. It's yours. You're welcome. Rossadoni5331. <laughs> uh, uh, this was the top rated comment on last week. This was my favorite comment. I yeah, screenshotted I this and sent it to you yeah, like within minutes of it coming in. Uh, they say, I do enjoy hearing George say, I might have to change the base on that so it fits with my army. Like his six models have an overarching theme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they do. <laughs> so soon to be eleven models. Soon to be eleven models. Yeah. Don't, don't forget that the Marty's has got 0 0.5 mil of basing, oh, yeah. basing yeah. material. Have you seen on that? The base. Have you seen on the base of the Marty's? It's like, got it's like this the, much a slither, <laughs> ground. A, a slither yeah. of ground yeah. that you can. Well, paint. that you have to add to. No, that you, you know, it's, it's your... sculpted, but you can paint it in your desired basing scheme. Oh, right. So if you have yeah. like brown earth, it's like, here's like your, this, this, this tiny bit can tie your whole army together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's also like a good spot for a little tuft or something, I suppose. Yeah. 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 Just cover it up completely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Michael Karaku says, curious to James's thoughts about the new death company and how it went from a blinged out kit to generic. Is that a hot tag? I suppose it's not. Um, it's been kind of a lot of people's thoughts, I suppose. I see. I understand. I like the the, the previous Death Company kit is amazing. I'm not going to do a long winded rant on this. The previous Death Company kit is amazing. It's got loads of great parts in it. You can do loads of things with it and scatter it through normal uh, uh, firstborn or even Primaris models if you want, like the pads and other trinkets and details. I kind of understand, like uh, from uh, from being a painter that obviously has painted for lots of years. If you're quite new to this, having loads and loads of detail on the model is quite intimidating and the idea obviously for so for new painter to get shoes of action and then see all these the, the, the sort of lavishment that they have if they had, did have loads of detail on the new ones it would be quite a bit of an everest i think and I, I can kind of understand i kind of try and look at things from both perspectives or from different angles rather than just my own sometimes and like the thing i i always say is that like with the upgrade packs uh, like the new one with even the OG firstborn blood angels upgrade pack and even if you've got parts from the original death company or sand guard kit you can put, I'm doing it at the moment. I'm literally using all those different upgrade packs and bits and heads and all these different things to, to, to add on that, that richness and flavor and detail that as a Blood Angel player, you would expect the models to have. Um, I guess it's a bit of a difficult one. If you're new, as I said, and you're getting into it and you see that they've got all these wings, skulls, blood drops, things all over them. It, it does, it could potentially be a lot for that person to tackle when it comes to painting the model. I, I spoke about this on the hobby hangout a little bit as well, actually. I... I'm one of the few people who's like in support of the sort of generification. Oh, I was about to say, stuff. I'm completely the same. I actually prefer when things, especially for infantry, mm. are less, simpler yeah. and more the same, like less, not, less unique from each other. Do you know I what get, it is for me? It's that it's so much easier to add detail on than to take it away. So mm. if you're buying a kit and they've got loads of sculpted bling and stuff on them, it's like forced upon you. However, if you've got a planar kit and an upgrade sprue or bits from your bits collection and you want to add them, I it's guess, so much easier to add stuff on and it's your choice. I guess but like point, in a way, you've actually got more choice because you're not like you haven't got a pick between these like pre-selection of parts. It's like if it's a blank pad, that's a blank canvas for you, if you know what I mean. But like the point of the comment, I guess, is that you don't get those options in the kit anymore. Whereas you used to get those options. Yeah, but even for just kit. even just for painting, it's like say you get a, a shoulder pad and it's got the like death company like cross on it. It's like, well, I haven't got a choice now. What if I want to look a skull on it or something? Like I can yeah. use transfers. Like, and they do come with transfers and stuff. They, so, they yeah. do. I, all I would say is that like, I, I personally, it doesn't bother me that much because I've 
my line of hobby and since I started has always been like make it your own add like do I've always been into converting always been into like adding personalization changing the pose all that kind of stuff adding those details on so yeah it's great having all the stock parts and I like the fact that you do there are previous iterations of kits that have loads of detail loads of bits they've not gone anywhere like you can still buy the odd you can buy shoulder pads neat like you can buy all of those little bits individually on eBay or if you you know if you get an old kit you still got those parts it's not like they're they're gone and they're like the dodo and they're dead and they're not around anymore like you can definitely, definitely get those cut, those parts to then add that richness and flavor on if you want to. My, my per, I'm not bothered by it. Like I'm quite happy to convert and quite happy to do things like that and, and add those details on. And I think that it's just making the entry point for that faction a bit of less of an Everest for someone potentially that's new. That's the way that I look at it. Also, like you were saying, like, for example, the crosses, like the, you know, the wounds of Sanguinius and stuff that they paint on their armor, like you can easily paint that on if you want. And it, teaches you to then practice freehand or it teach like they, i think that you're quite right that the more i don't want to say bland but the more plainness of the models gives actually more scope for you to then do things to them and that that's the way that i look at it if you want them plain and like imagine your situation like where you're where you're painting you've got to get a thousand points done and you're playing a tournament in like x amount of weeks or whatever if it does if you if you've built the kit and it has all those details and things on it you've got so much more to do for a short time frame whereas if you if you are doing a tournament or if you are more of a, of a tournament player than a, than a painter or whatever you can paint them black paint the weapon casings red put on a couple of transfers and there's your death company do you know what i mean whereas if you're the super passionate blood angels fanboy you can do all the things and get all the parts and add all the things on and then spend the time painting them so i think it just gives a bit more flexibility rather than it being leaned heavily towards the the the, the super fan it, gives or the, you, or the it definitely gives you more choice i think because if you're someone that wants if you are like playing for a tournament and stuff like you'd have to spend so much time cleaning all of that stuff and like removing stuff. Or if you didn't just like that look and you wanted to like freehand bits and whatever, you'd have to like sit there. How it's a nightmare to sit there with like scalpel blade and just like shave all this stuff off and whatever. So yeah, yeah, I agree. You have, initial, like I say, sticking stuff on so easy, like yeah. so easy to add stuff. I, I think anything which enriches the hobby in the sense of like making you convert, making you add stuff, making you think about what you're creating, like making making you have choices and make and make decisions i think that anything that is like that is only actually better for you as a hobbyist and as a painter or as a modeler or as a converter like i think that's only going to going to help you um yeah that, that's my take on it like i said it's not going to stop me from having a crazy over the top detailed like super super like like crazy detailed death company unit or army or blood angels army or whatever but like i get to choose what bits of individual detail each one yeah. of those models has rather than it being preordained and i, I think that's the that, that that's the way i look at it i think people that um that don't like the change or are upset by it. I don't think that they're wrong. No, I don't either. But I don't, I, it's one of those changes where I don't see it as a good thing or a bad thing. It's just yeah. like, it's going to suit some people and it's not going to suit others, I guess. I just think, just don't, just pick a better army than Blood Angels. <laughs> You're outvoted here, Jack. <laughs> uh, last one. Happy Dude says, I wonder how much higher people run their desks for painting. I know personally, I prefer having the desk higher than I would have it for a computer. So I can rest my elbows on the table whilst keeping a straighter back. Uh, and they say, really want to move to a standing desk at some stage. Yeah, we spoke about this briefly, didn't we? And mm -hmm. you said Quipster was mentioning it. Yeah. I've been seriously considering, considering it. Considering this. Yeah. Because I do, yeah, it's just the height thing. And like, I, I like adjust my chair height, but then my legs are all like weird. Like, I don't know. Like, then my legs don't feel comfortable. Do you know what I mean? Like, my, I, my I want my... I want my everything up a bit more yeah like, i feel like i'm like crouching over the <laughs> table all the time my setup is ergonomic hell at the minute because i've just got a tiny tiny it was the small when i moved it was the smallest desk that i could like fit but i still have my nice secret labs chair but it's actually like too big to fit under it properly yeah so i'm sat sort of like next to my i'm not like fully under it my knees aren't like all the way tucked in or anything you got, mm. a, you got a snug desk it's it's, it's, a, yeah. it's like this wide like the gap for my legs it's, it's tiny mm, yeah. yeah yeah i guess but the so. thing is, you make you make what you got work. You know what I mean. So, like, look at the. Look we, at the we've I've said it before. But we've had painters join who didn't have a desk. Who joined the team? Yeah. Like, so. You work with what you got. You, you know? sort of yeah. You, you stop making excuses when you see some of the work that people are doing with like less <laughs> less uh, less space than you, I guess. But yeah, yeah. I've, I haven't got a huge. 
I mean, I'm sitting there being like, oh, I've got to crouch over and stuff. <laughs> well, but... Standing desks tend to be quite big, though, don't they? Yeah, but I'd say so, they, yeah. they, they're yeah. quite big, but I think that it actually saves space in the room because you're not needing to have a chair then as well. So like, for, No, you know, but we were talking no, about no. using it while still sitting down, but it just oh, gives right, you an okay. adjustable height. Yeah, yeah. So Because yeah. the standing desks basically can just be any height between like normal low height and all the way up to like standing height and anywhere in between. So what people do is they get a standing desk they sit down at it oh, and they right, just allow okay. them to bring the table up yeah, like yeah. 10 inches yeah, fair. and then they can rest their elbows on it. Yeah, fair. But, uh, you could stand as well. I'd actually quite like that to be honest. Just like If you're like building or something, just take a little break, stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Be nice. I would not enjoy no? that. No, I don't think so. I like, I, I need to be comfortable but when I'm like, but the whole standing desk thing, the reason I've never looked into it is because I didn't understand the, uh, why, why, someone, why someone would want to <laughs> no, I'm not acknowledging it why <laughs> someone would want to do that I couldn't just like stand there and work personally when I it's a very like it, reminds, it makes me think like very like Silicon Valley like you imagine some guy with like some sort of like you, you just know. walk in and they're on like a, a exercise bike yeah yeah like yeah. With, moving their legs this guy in the corner on a like bean bag yeah yeah, yeah. When I yeah. teach at Bad Moon, I stand while teaching because the because it's just because it's on the higher desks at the front, and I, I genuinely, I actually find it really pretty comfortable doing that. Um, you're still leaning on the desk, yeah. It's not like you're just free floating. You're not just yeah, but I'm like there. standing up. Yeah, you still just lean. I might as well sit down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I can't, I can't argue that. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Like, if I was in the like the boardroom when they were coming up with that, I would have just said that and the standing desk never would have been released probably. <laughs> God. No one in that boardroom went, well, yeah, but just sit down. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Combat Patrol magazine then. So, if you're not familiar, uh, is it Hatchet Partworks who does it? Yeah. But it's like a legit GW. like Yeah, it's licensed. That yeah. I think Hatchet do all manner of these kind of subscription-based magazines for all different companies. Yeah. So basically, if you're not aware, this is like a, it's a weekly thing, but I think if you subscribe, they send it like every month. It is weekly yeah. issues, yeah, and there's different ways to get it, yeah. which we'll get into. Regardless yeah. of that though, so it's weekly issues of magazines and they come with some models and then inside- Or other stuff. Or other stuff and then other hobby related stuff and then inside uh, the magazine, there's like details on like how to paint and the idea is that you can sort of like build up an army or multiple armies and like a Warhammer collection kind of like if he was going, the idea I think is if he was going from like nothing, yeah. you could subscribe to this and then every month you get a delivery of like some stuff and you can spend the whole month like doing that. Is it every week? Delivery. Or, or is that, so well, the, the issues it, are weekly and they're in stores weekly. Right. But if you're a subscriber, you get a box. You get once a month, you get four issues sent cool. to you basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just for postage. That's if you month. subscribe through Hatchet. Through yeah. Hatchet. You can subscribe through like, uh, I think Forbidden Planet, mm -hmm. in which case you would get each issue weekly, I think. I don't think that's a subscription. Though. I think that's just. I think uh, you can just subscribe. You can subscribe to any comic okay. or magazine or anything at okay, Forbidden fair. Planet. So they or they'll they'll put it aside for you or, or whatever. I don't know if you have to go in store. So you have to be in London. But fair enough. Well, do fair. Know, Eve, do, do you know? Do you know how I know this thing has been is like being marketed far and wide? Mm. I was at home cooking dinner. Phone goes off. Dad, or actually, my dad video called me. It wasn't just a phone call. It was a video call. It was that important that he video called me. I went. Guess what? Just seen Warhammer on the TV. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, what? Sorry, Dad, I'm cooking. Um, yeah, there's TV adverts. There's TV for adverts for it as well. Yeah, but like, it's literally. Do you remember, like, you know, those adverts where the guy speaks at like five million miles an hour during the small print or the terms and conditions? Yeah, it's like a proper sales advert. It's like the the advert is like, it must be like less than thirty seconds long. It's like it's like fifteen seconds max. It's where they speed through it. And it goes Warhammer like then it goes, goes yeah. uh, stuff and it's gone. It's like a like a flash. It's yeah. like it's like um my dad, yeah, my dad video called me to tell me he'd seen Warhammer on the TV. <laughs> I, love I, was that. Like, I was like, I was like, oh, cheers, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so the the thing with this um then, I guess by the name Combat Patrol, I guess the idea is that there's like multiple I don't know if they're like full proper combat patrols or if it's like combat patrol equivalent. Um, um, so um, in terms of points. The so combat patrols are set. It's not like it's not like oh, five hundred yeah. points is a combat patrol. So I believe the combat patrols that they're listing are the combat patrols gotcha. for each army. Like that's why the points values vary between each army. It's because in combat patrol, the points values don't really matter because it's just combat patrol versus combat patrol. Yeah. Um, so the actual individual points don't really come into it. 
as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah, because obviously I was looking into whether we wanted to do Combat Patrol or just a thousand points to start off with. Gotcha. Um, it's, so, a, it's a good way to get well, new people into pre- it. Previously, it's been um, these magazines. This is the third iteration of the 40K version of this magazine. I believe so, yeah. So previously, I think what you've ended up with is two armies at the end of it with some scenery yep. and stuff. And the idea is There might that, be like the odd random kit scattered in, but it was like majoritively like two main forces, wasn't it? Yeah, I think what they did was, we'll get into it, but they do these like, you could pay a premium and get some extra stuff. Yeah. And I think previously the extra stuff was different armies. Mm. But um, I think the first one was Conquest, which is what I did for a period of time which I think was Space Marines and Death Guard. Yeah, it must and then, have been because that was around the time of the Dark Imperium. Like, and then George did the one after, which was Imperium. Yeah, that's the one I Which did, was yeah. Space Marines and Necrons. Necrons, yeah. that was it, yeah. 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 I remember getting, so they, follow, they tend to follow the um, Star Box. Yeah, which was like, that edition. That was the uh, Indominus like, edition. Yeah. Was off the back of that. I remember, though, there being like a scattering because it was like Imperium. I remember there being some like random admix stuff. And whatnot, yeah, so. yeah. Um, just take a look at this then. So uh, on the list here that I'm looking at, uh, you've got Space Marines, Astra Militarum, Chaos Space Marines, World Eaters, Tyranids, uh, Leagues of Votan, Orcs, Eldari, and Gene Stealer Cults. And there is between five and 750 points worth of oh, models for each, each of those. Of those, for each of those factors. So that's the idea is at the end of the subscription, which I don't know how long it lasts, it's around a year, I think. It must be. It's going to have to yeah. be more than a year, surely. For that amount of miniatures, like if you're getting a miniature or a have squad to be more or than a thing. Year. Call it like a year, 18 months, somewhere in there. I'm not entirely sure, but it'll be based on the previous ones. I think it was like a, I a year and a bit. I two years, I reckon. Okay. But like, anyway, so the the idea is, yeah, the end of the subscription, you'll have all of those combat patrols, um, which... It's definitely a more unique way of doing it. I guess they're targeting more people. It's, so it's just I would guess that it's to get newer people into it and expose them to all the different factions, or you know, just just I think I think it's a, well, it's an interesting way of doing it. Um, all I know is that I from previous iterations, those models, uh, you they end up you see you find a lot of them on eBay, or you find a lot of them being sold in trading groups and things like that. So well, specifically, you find a lot of whatever happens to be in the first issue, yeah, because. As with all of these magazines, the first issue is always cheapest, the best one. Like it's like the cheapest. It's like a, it's like three pounds, I think. Yeah. And in this one, for Combat Patrol, you get the Terminator Captain from Leviathan mm-hmm. and the Tyranid Prime from Leviathan yep. for three pounds. So a lot of people are going to be buying that, and uh, yeah, you end up like kind of reselling. You do also get like exclusive. Or at least one exclusive model at some point. There's, there's normally issue five, I think. There's kind of two of this one. So there's an like an exclusive sculpt for yeah. this magazine, which is like an Infernus Marine Sergeant. Yeah. But also what they're doing with this one, interestingly, is if you're I don't know if it's on like I'm not sure which like subscription tier it's within, uh, but one of their like free bundles for being a member is you get the Primaris Company Champion which was limited edition like previously. Darth yeah. Sidious. Yes. Yeah, yeah that okay. guy. So, and you can't get him currently. Yeah. Like the only way to get him was a couple of years ago when it was, was it like model, um, one of those? It was one of the anniversary of yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. The, so, the free gifts, I think, are if you subscribe via Hatchet, yeah. then um, after one month subscription, you might get a free gift. Oh, no, you've been here for three months, you get the next free gift. Oh, no, you've been here for five months, you get the next free yeah, gift. Yeah, it's a way so of keeping so, you as a member, isn't it? So you obviously, and naturally that model is the the last one. So you've yeah. got to have been there. I don't know if it's got it written down how long you have to be there for it, but... Um, yeah. Um, so arguably there's like kind of two in a way with this one, sort of. So you've got one exclusive sculpt and there's one model. Yeah, it's the, only the exclusive way sculpt, it. I think it's probably issue five. I don't know. It is issue five. Yeah, it so... Which is the way to to cleverly get you because, like, as you say, you get it delivered in fours. Yeah. So if you want the exclusive sculpt, second month, you are, you're over into the second month. They know what they're doing. <laughs> um, should we should we speak about our experiences with these previously then? Because the the idea with these is that there's like there's supposed to be 
a, a reasonably significant amount of savings mm. on all of the miniatures if you go for this subscription. They're often like a cheap way to pick stuff up. But um, we'll speak of our experiences with the previous ones because I think you'll probably know some are a really, really good deal yeah. and some are not. not. <laughs> yeah. They're really not. Yeah. Um, that is how these things work though. That is just how, just to, to preface this, um, I have a bit of experience with the subscription box model um, and in doing my, in, in terms of I, I've subscribed to them before and I've also ran one before. So I did a lot of research into that industry a while ago and ultimately one of the reasons I ended up stopping my one that I ran was I could not figure out a way um, to make it guaranteed good value for the person every single time. Yeah, The way those companies work is that sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. And even then, again, not to go over the whole value thing again, but even then I'm talking numerically. I'm not talking about whether they like the thing or not because I can't control that. But numerically, like factually, value-wise, in terms of money savings. Yeah. Do you um, actually save money on buying these products? Yeah, and it was almost impossible to sustain a company doing that where you were giving that value every single time, at least starting out. When you're a bigger company, you could probably afford to. Um, so for example, a company like this doing this magazine, they probably could afford to if they wanted to. But what I'm getting at is the way that the, the reason these things even exist is to have a really good deal one time and then make up for that really good deal another time. Yeah. And they bank on you enjoying the really good deal ones enough that you stay, you stay for the whole thing. Yeah. Um, that's, that's how it, they kind of go really. So that is the whole... The, these magazines, by the way, nothing new. Like even even with subscription, I'm, I'm glad boxes, you said that. Like even with subscription boxes being, I would say relatively new in terms of if you, if you look at like loot crates, probably like ten years ago that started really popping off, and that was the popular one. Well, I I, um, I remember as a kid, I I'm, I'm mega into airplanes. When I was a kid, I must have been like eight or nine. My I saw an advert on TV. It was a magazine series called take off and it was all about planes and you built a, a tornado fighting jet fighter like an airfix kit but they gave you the parts every single week yeah I was, so it's, I was a, it's similar like thing so well, that's what i'm getting at is even before all these like subscription boxes being a thing um these magazines have existed for years yeah, yeah i yeah. did i yeah, did yeah. one um as a kid where i built like a little um i can't remember what it was called so if anyone happens to remember this but it was like you build like a little robot all right. It was like a little remote control robot and you got new parts every time and it was like you had to like solder it and stuff and like it, it, it was really cool. Like it was a, a cool little thing. It was like a little like dome shaped thing and it was on wheels and it would move around. If anyone can remember what magazine I'm on about, that'd be great. Because uh, I, I, um, I did that. I didn't get the full thing. I ended up not. I, I ended like up most of these, mo in my experience of knowing people who have subscribed to these boxes and stuff and myself, most people don't make it to the end, typically. With yeah, I it. guess the difference boxes, there isn't really an end, but the uh, magazines, yeah, yeah there's yeah, there's yeah. a run, yeah. and you get a thing at the end of it where, like, in in the case of Combat Patrol, you get all these Combat Patrols at the end. Or, yeah. um, I'll be interested to see how they the release schedule, as in, like, could you just do the first X amount of issues and have, oh yeah, a Combat Patrol, yeah. Or are you going to slowly build each one up? Because we know what one would make more money. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do wonder what way they're going to go with that. But yeah, that that is just the fundamental thing to understand about the the model of this sort of thing is that like they are designed to, um, you know, give you a really good deal one week and and not such a good deal the next week. And it's the overall thing is where you need to look at the overall as whether you yeah. want that or not. The yeah. upshot of these, though, compared to like some of the models that you were talking about when you were kids, both of you, is fortunately these magazines are available individually to just purchase from certain retailers. Yeah. And because they're GW kits, it's a whole kit in that issue, right? Whereas with like the model, like plane kit that you used to when you were younger, you went out and bought one of the random like, here's a wheel. Like, here's the propeller. <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So on the upside, if, well, there, I mean, is a, I mean, if there is a particular issue that's coming out where you go, oh, I like the look of that. I think that would be a good deal. I want those models. And this is like a cheap way to get them. 
It's yeah. like just an all-in-one package. You can just buy that one individual That's issue. That's where the Forbidden Planet thing comes in handy because Forbidden Planet... It's a, that's a Forbidden Planet's a um, comics. It's like a comics a, it, it started as a comic shop in the UK, I think, and then it just sells every kind of nerdy like anything now. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah, they had they for whatever reason seem to they must have a good do a good relationship with Hatchet maybe, and they get a lot of the individual issues. Like I've walked into the London store a few times while these things have been going on and they'll have a whole like rack of just like not just current issue of these sort of magazines but like back issues and stuff and like the ones that people were going crazy for and they'll just be on the shelf so that you can also order them individually online you can order them from the website yeah Yeah. so that is a good way to do it yeah because you can just pick and choose like i I suppose the thing is is like with with the way the years have gone on and times have changed back in the day when I was doing that one, like you had to wait every week or whatever to get the parts. You could, it was, cause it was mail order. You'd literally, it gets sent to you. There wasn't like a, a website to go on and, and buy them or like they weren't sold. It is shops. funny that like, so was that a full, was that an actual airfix? It was, thing? I think it was an airfix kit that you got. It was a tornado GR one. Like, um, and I'd be worried if you got a propeller cause they don't have propellers, but yeah. Um, like oh, it, it, he's it, done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, he's been sitting on that one since you said it. I said but, wheel. Do they have wheels? They do have wheels. Yeah, I, I wouldn't land if they didn't have wheels. Like so, so yeah. I didn't get I didn't get the tornado. I just had plan. But 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 the the thing is is like um is that you had to wait every week to get it, and it was like an exciting thing, and like you couldn't go into a shop. So they, like it was it was exciting to get it, the thing every it's week. Like crazy about that one though to think of it because that is the equivalent of if this magazine was. At the end of it, you got a Valkyrie. Yeah. Like, imagine if this magazine was, and now you have a this Valkyrie. piece of the Valkyrie. Yeah. Don't even get a now whole sprue. Yeah. Now you have this piece yeah. of the Valkyrie. Yeah. That's what these magazines used to be. Yeah. yeah. And you realize by the end of it, you're like 82 weeks in, you're dropped 900 quid on yeah. three quarters of a, <laughs> on a Spitfire. On a <laughs> well, I know. Well, this is the thing. Though, I'm not going to lie. There was one on TV the other day. Sorry to go on a tangent, but oh, there's one that flagged up on the TV. Like, you know, it was built like a Lancaster, like, and you got like, I don't know, like the, the, a propeller is the first the yeah. first bit or whatever and um i was like look i watched it, i was like oh, I'd, I'd love to do that it's but like it's like, like they like, don't know that people watching tv like are, are, are aware of the existence of model kits like you can just go and buy a model kit yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah I know. but no i get parts to send to my house every week no um yeah so i don't really have experience with the with the with the 40k one so I, the one thing i from noticing from obviously doing research previous to the episode of obviously the, the two that have been or two that been previous to this one i think the one thing that actually this one could be quite good for is that as a group of friends, if you had like, like take your example, you and obviously your mates are obviously starting armies or whatever. Like if you all contributed X amount to the monthly subscription amount or whatever, just like chop and, and then change chop and change stuff, years. you could essentially then get those, just the bits you want, just the bits you want from it. Obviously they're going to become piecemeal by the, by the sounds of yeah. it, you know, but I suppose that's one way of doing it where you could all, <laughs> I'm just imagining you've got like a group of four friends and it's like, Right, you get the Leviathan Captain, yeah. and you get the Gene Stealer Colt, and you get the Valkyrie, and you can have Corn Red. <laughs> yeah, you can, have, you can have the paints and the dice and all that yeah. that they're in. But the thing is, it, like, it, it works quite well because if you are a painter and you're more of a gamer, you can just get loads of paint and then just like. The problem pick is, model. typically with these, the paint issues are the ones where you don't save money. Yeah, maybe, they are yeah. the ones you'll get like two pots of paint and the issue costs a tenner yeah, yeah they're the um, ones to what they're the ones to watch out for in my experience it's the ones where it's like brushes and a couple of and you've got no choice of the paints it's like four paints randomly but, uh, bundled. Again, does it fit with if, the whole collection of paint though does it give you the whole no, paint range no no, 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 no. just okay. just paints relevant that they, ones paints to the that models they would, yeah, that right, you've been okay. getting paints they would typically consider yeah relevant to the yeah. box if, if you got like space marines last week you might get McCrag blue oh right okay, and then like retributive saying that there was a, a good one with paint from like the one that I did maybe. Did it come with a wash? Was that why it made it an all right oh, deal? Like potentially. Or it was like literally you got like a gold, a blue and the black or something and it was still one of the discounted price issues. Right. Something like that. So I remember I ended up with like three pots of <laughs> Chaos Black and like three pot, pots of Ultramarine Blue or whatever. If you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. 
And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. What was your like overall experience as a customer? So I say? subscribed to, like I say, uh, Conquest, which was the, f I think the first one that Warhammer did of this w with. I think it's the first, I think the, f I think technically the first one they done was an AOS one, but I think Conquest was the first. I don't even I might be that. wrong. So but I remember there being an AOS I, one. I subscribed through Hatchet. Mm -hmm. So I did the, um, yeah, every four weeks I got a package. Um, I do vividly remember it being like quite confusing as to like, what what am I actually paying for? Extra options. What are these free things that I get? When do I get them? Like all this stuff. And even down to the fact of like, for some reason, my subscription, I have no idea why, if this is the standard or whatever, but my subscription was, which I think you're going to say similar, so maybe it was the standard. Um, they would send me the thing. They would send me the package of um, four issues and then invoice me for it. And then I had to manually pay the invoice. So I had that for, I had that on every drop that I had mine, from them. Mine wasn't that. Mine was a direct debit, and they would just withdraw So that's money what I thought that I was doing, but I guess apparently not. Um, Actually, I think I, I might have done it through PayPal even. Either way, it was like it was automated, and then I'd so get the stuff. So when I eventually cancelled... Um, Talk, talk, talk about that experience. Talk about the cancelling You can get to your thing of this because yeah. mine's similar. But when I eventually cancelled because I just wasn't... When I started it, I was like, oh, this will be good. This will give me a focus and this will give me something to paint every week and it will keep me on track kind of thing. Naturally, didn't go like that. So I ended up with a load of models that I wasn't painting. And also it happened right at the time where um, a lot of my friends that I was gaming with for 40K... Um, just had zero interest in 40k anymore. So everyone around me kind of, it, th that happened basically. So I like didn't really have much interest yeah, yeah. in it, didn't have much need for it. Um, so when I cancelled, I, that, it wasn't until I cancelled that I actually like realized how many little things there must be to read and be careful of and stuff because I cancelled. They still sent me the next package and then invoice me for it. Um, and then I tried to send it back and that kind of got nowhere. So I just had this like stack of models and an invoice that I needed to pay. So I just paid it and then it was canceled kind of thing. But it, that made the cancellation made me realize like, Oh, there's actually a lot of like little hoops to jump through with these kind of things and stuff. Like I wish I did go the, even for the ones that I got and I like, I wish I did go the um, single issue route, picking them up yeah. at shops route which is what I did for the second one just as and when on a couple of things um, I just picked up the individual issues did you find cancelling quite complicated as well I don't do you know what I don't remember it super clearly um, I think I just emailed them and there was a bit of a, I could probably pull up the emails but there was <laughs> like a, a bit of a back and forth and I thought I did think like well, I'm just, I'm, surely I'm asking to cancel. Like you just say, yes, okay, here's how we do that. Like I remember there being a bit of a couple of things like, or they would come back and ask something or whatever. So it didn't feel super easy to be honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of these things as well, I don't know if it's changed. Sometimes they get you in like 12 month contracts and things like that without you necessarily realizing it. Um, like the classic, like gym memberships, uh, a, a classic for that. And like, um, so that's stuff to watch out for. I don't know if, if they particularly do this, but my actual experience of the sort of subscribing and everything, um, the magazine uh, clearly wasn't aimed at me. Like that is, I think the magazines are aimed at you are completely new to Warhammer. Here is a full introduction of everything. Um, they're quite 
thin. <laughs> There's yeah. not too much to them. Um, and they just can contain the instructions, a little bit of law. That's about it. I think when um, you're starting out, though, that's all you need. If it's if it's targeted at that demographic, though, that's uh, like if you. No, I think we're just saying if you're an esteemed. I'm just saying for me, like, oh, right, okay, then, yeah, yeah, you know, for me, I I read the first one and I was like, okay, I get what these are like, and then I did not read a single one of oh, right, the other okay. magazines. Yeah. Like, I I just didn't like. I was like, that's that's not why I'm here, I guess. Um, but on average, I was like pretty happy with what I got for what I was spending. Like yeah. There were some that were really good, like for me, really good. Like it was like, I wanted to do a Space Marines Army. I wanted to do a Death Guard Army. And some of them I was getting like a Plague Burst Crawler or something for a tenner. And I was yeah. like, yeah, brilliant. Like that's, that's fine. Um, there was a few where they like, there's a few where they did split the kits over multiple episodes. Really? Yeah. Uh, episodes? Issues. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, on the first, on my one anyway, I'm, I'm sure there was like potentially, the, potentially a redemptor dreadnought oh really? came in two issues. Um, I remember if it was like a 10 man squad of something, you might get five and then another five, but they were like, as you know, with GW Sprues, it was like still the four. Yeah, five. it wasn't, it wasn't that. And that's not what I'm talking about. It was like, um, you needed both to complete it, to complete a yeah. single model for bigger models. Um, I mean, like I say, I didn't hate it. I didn't feel like ripped off or anything. Um, Did you feel like it was a good deal? Um, it. I, I feel like, again, it's hard to say because like factually, money-wise, if you did the entire thing, I'm sure you would save money versus buying every single one of those things. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that is, I don't know, but I'm sure that is factually a thing they've they've been pretty reasonable discount i think it was like between like 30 and 50 percent like overall between yeah some, so over the years. so i it's yeah a pretty, so it's it, a pretty substantial if you last monetary for, savings technically but for then that to be worth it you have to have wanted all those things exactly and that is where they get you and again that is where i ran into issues with subscription boxes and stuff is because you are saving money but you're almost paying for that in return of you don't being given things that you don't want yeah. necessarily. Yeah. You're, you're having choice taken away from you. So you, yes, you're saving money, but you're losing choice. So what, which one do you, would it's, you prefer? Does that make sense? It's like, kind of like that thing where like someone comes back from like shopping all day and they're like, oh, I got this jacket. I saved 200 pounds. It was like, you know, hundreds yeah. off. And you're like, was you planning on getting a jacket? Did you need a jacket? Did you need like, a jacket? Because yeah. cool. what I'm hearing is you just spent two hundred pounds on a jacket, yeah. not you saved X amount. You yeah, know I mean? yeah, it's that, it's that thing. And the thing is, some people, like me to a certain extent, will get enjoyment out of, oh, here's the new, here's the new package, and opening it up and like t seeing what the next issues are going to be and stuff like that. That is exciting. That is again part of the allure of uh, subscription boxes and stuff, especially like mystery ones. Yeah. Um, so you it, was also, it was a good feeling as well when you like you'd forget about it arriving. You'd come home from work, you're like, oh, it, and then you turn up and it's yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. So like that, some people just enjoy that format as well. It's yeah. not all about. Some people are subscribing to it not because they think it's going to save them money, yeah. but because they will enjoy the process yeah, of what yeah. this magazine's going yeah. to do for them. And yeah. it kind of uh, one way to look at it, I suppose, is it kind of plans your hobby for the foreseeable because you're like, oh, okay, I, I don't need to go and go out and buy stuff. I'm going to have stuff coming to me, and I can work on that when it gets that, to me, or like. I suppose that's one way of it. That is like the utopia that I tricked myself into thinking <laughs> I, was, I was building. But within like a couple of months, I was so behind. And then, do you know what I mean? Like, I get, yeah. oh, I get it, that, yeah. But for someone who actually sticks to it. Well, that's what I, I was saying. Like if you had like a group of friends and you all go, <clears> you all go into it and you're all getting bits every sort of week mm. or month or whatever. I think maybe that, like if you've got like eight people that get any, I don't know how many factions there are. I think it's eight or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, quite they, a few. Like, you, you, you could then build those I would say, controls by doing it that way. Make sure you have some trustworthy friends, though. Otherwise, you end up in like a bit of the classic, like you're going to foot in the bill for some uni, you uni don't want house it. share, uh, like uni house share thing of like someone's paying the bills and then collecting money from everyone else and stuff. And you get into, yeah, you fair. can put yourself into some trouble there. So yeah. make sure everyone's got to pay up, kind of thing. I had with the Imperium mod, I had a pretty similar experience to you, I'd say, overall, in that I didn't have a big Warhammer collection, like at all, really. And I saw. I was enticed by the like, if you subscribe for this long, like here's the stuff you get, whatever. And I thought overall, 
even if there's some like random ones I don't want, I could always sell them and like make my money back on at least on the issue or whatever. So I thought like I kind of got nothing to lose. I'll subscribe for a bit and if I enjoy it, I'll keep it going. And when I stop enjoying it, I'll just cancel it because I didn't really have any like end goal of building an army. I just wanted to get some stuff. And I quite liked the look of the first sort of like 10 to 15 issues. So I knew I was like good for the first few months because I knew I actually did want the stuff. Um, and especially there was like an exclusive model in there. So all well and good. Um, I enjoyed like packages arrived on time. Like it was all, it was, wasn't hard to pay for it. And it was all made. It was absolutely fine. Like as a customer experience, issues were all decent. Like I didn't really get any value out of the magazines. Like you said, similar sort of thing, but like the stuff that was in it was what it was supposed to be. I was happy. Uh, where I got annoyed was when I'd decided I'd had enough. I was like, oh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to cancel this. I'm building up a bit of a pile here that I'm not really getting through. Like that's, that's fair enough. I'll go. Can I'll go cancel. Log into the website. Thinking there's going to be like a cancel button, like most modern websites. There's not. <laughs> I find out that I've got to like email customer service and put in like a request to be allowed to cancel it. Yeah. Email customer service. A couple of days go by. I finally hear back from them. There's, I think like you, there was a bit of like confirmation. Yeah. They was like, oh, can you just confirm? It's like, are you sure you're sure? <laughs> tick tick here. Yeah. Like bit of that. Finally cancelled. It kind of drags it out a bit as well. Yeah, Suddenly yeah. you're actually cancelling like a, a week, week later. or two later yeah. than you tried to cancel. Yeah. So I remember cancelling it, thinking that was it. And then like a couple of days later, I got something saying like, oh, um, because you're like a subscriber, you get this like exclusive book uh, for like some commemorative book for like the all the issues and stuff. And I thought, oh, I don't really want that. And I saw like the fine print at the bottom. It was like for a charge of something like 25 quid. I'm like, I don't want that. Like, no, mm. I'd already cancelled it thinking it was all fine. And then they sent me the book anyway. And because I had cancelled my like direct debit and stuff, because I cancelled the subscription, they just sent me an invoice. And then I was like, well, no, I don't want it. Like send it back or whatever. And then they sent me like, I kind of like dragged it out a bit. And then I got like a payment like reminder. And I was going to say there was going to be like a penalty if I didn't pay it. And I'm like, well, yeah, I, you sort of force this thing upon me. Like, it's kind of what want. I got when, when I, I cancelled and they just like, yeah, it, it it was like oh I don't know what to yeah know what to do and then yeah you get like these payment reminders, it's obviously all covered in small print and stuff like that yeah but, sure like it is. they bank on people not reading that it's which still, obviously I didn't because like I as a customer didn't. it leaves you with a sour taste in your mouth at the end of it though doesn't it yeah but I would say having learned all of that, what I'm going to be doing for this uh, this one for the combat patrol is having learned what I learned with the last one I am going to just buy individual issues for the ones that I like the look of. If there happens to be one that I see is coming up, I'm like, oh, that's a good deal. I can get whatever kit for eight quid. Mm. Then I'm just going to buy that individual issue, probably from Forbidden Planet or online or I think even that, on eBay. I think that would be my wholehearted recommendation would be to... It's, you're you're going to have to be in a very specific situation. Is there is there for, really anyone who actually wants every single specific kit that is in that and was going to buy it anyway, therefore are making a saving? I don't know. I mean, some... Obviously, is there literally the, anyone? The reason the reason these that. things if, happen if, multiple if that's times. That's you. Please comment. <laughs> but the reason these things happen multiple times, and there's different versions of it, it's surely because people do, you know, or or the individual issues do just make enough revenue individually that that it warrants them doing the full campaign. I don't know. Like, I, I think the problem like, the problem I have is that if enough people, if enough, if it was as simple as enough people want it for it to exist, then they wouldn't have to have all these other like little tricks and loopholes and it's difficult to cancel and this is an extra chart this book's yeah. an extra 25 yeah. quid that you didn't ask for and if for you stay and, on for this amount of issues we'll give you all this free stuff free yeah. stuff this is this isn't even necessarily a criticism of this specific magazine this is just the ma that type of magazine yeah. model this is just how it goes see like it was that. so much easier in my day you literally pay one thing every single month get a bit of a plane and then you build a plane at the end of it and you get a magazine I mean that's probably even I mean, if you work that out that's now probably I bet that's, 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 I mean, I bet that's yeah. probably the worst deal that's probably even you've probably got the opposite off. of a savings you probably spent like oh, I know, I, know. I, could, I could go out and buy a tornado gl one off the shelf and build it and enjoy it but I guess I don't know like I don't know I, I, that's I think what I'm saying though some people the experience are, are, is are there for the experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what they're paying for. But that's yeah. what I mean is I think if enough people, if it was as simple as, oh yeah, everyone wants it, they wouldn't really have to have these like, even just like bundling them as four issues at a time. Yeah. So you can't cancel after two issues. I think part or, of that probably is to save on postage though, to be fair, because yeah, I would be paying for postage every single issue. It's classic iceberg. There's going to be, there's going to be reasons why certain things are done, but at the end of the day, they're, it's designed to make money. I don't know, you know what the overall postage cost on each one is. 
I'm not sure on each drop of yeah. four. But I would assume it's cheaper to get four of them delivered in one go than one. Potentially, yeah, potentially. But again, uh, yeah, I, I that would be my recommendation. Is I, I'm going to do it with this one. I'm going to keep an eye out on individual issues. Yeah. Um. I. I. But and also, like, I found myself like just on, on another thing on this. The um, in terms of buying them in shops, the last ones. I found really easy to just walk into like a news agents and find it. Mm -hmm. Like every local news agents near me, I would just walk in. There'd be a couple on the shelf. First issue, second issue, like every issue would have a couple there. Um, Maybe it's because I'm not in like a main city. Like I think if you were maybe in like a more, a busier area. They'd all get snapped up. They'd all get snapped up quicker. So fair enough. But like this first issue has come out, this Combat Patrol one. As you'd expect, even though I don't need a Captain or a Tyranny Prime, I wanted to go and pick one up for three pounds. I think actually all of us have bought the first issue. Have I you ha- bought one? I have not. I haven't. No, no. But this is my problem. I okay. haven't. I right. went out to buy it twice, and I've looked in every shop that would have it. You can every find sh- it. Every shop I'd seen the last ones, I can't find a single thing. The people in the shop don't have a clue what I'm on about. See, um, so I, I ordered mine online, and I, I think it actually arrives today. So, th- so I don't know if. It actually has been physically in shops yet. I don't. I can't, it has been because uh, I, I know, I know Paul delay. went and Paul went and bought one. Yeah, I haven't yeah. found one. Did you get one. In Smiths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was. I haven't yeah. found one anywhere, and I went out on the day that it re- released, and I, I couldn't find one anywhere around yeah. near me, around here, like it, none. Mm. So n- any of the normal spots, I would find it, it. Do you know what? It's so interesting that both of you have had these like negative experiences or whatever, and you're oh, like, oh, we keep coming I'm back. Still <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but we're not. If you like, we're not subscribing. We're doing what we are yeah. recommending everyone do, yeah. which is you buy get, individual episodes. Yeah. Like, it's I'll, not. Yeah. It's, we haven't had. We're not subscribing to it again. No, um, I'll be getting that first one with the uh, Terminator Captain because Blood Angels, obviously Terminator mm. Captain, a couple of quid. You know what, I've already no got brainer. the Captain. I don't need. Have you? It. I don't even need it. I don't need. It. I don't need it. <laughs> I haven't got one. Uh, so and that, I have no interest in painting Tyranids, but well, that'll be ending up on eBay. Three yeah. pounds. <laughs> Uh, and I'll be getting issue five for the uh, exclusive. I definitely want that. Yeah. I definitely want that. Sergeant. And to be fair, I managed to I managed to get the captain in the last one fairly easy, just walking into a shop. Yeah. But this, day, this, is, the, this is the thing. Like, I, I, st- I still think that you can literally not subscribe to it or you can scroll, whatever you choose to do. But like these models still end up in trading groups on eBay, which is the thing. It brings the price bought. of them yeah. down overall, actually, because if you go on eBay it's and you flooded. look pre this magazine, I searched. that Terminator Captain was like a tenner. Yeah. And mm. then now, obviously, it's going to be like I four, saw one pounds. yesterday mm. for five pounds buy it now. There you go. And I was like, yeah. I was like, 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 so if you, if this, it goes back to the conversation we're having in other episodes where like, even with Crypto, like, there's, there's always a way, in my opinion, from, to, to get the model that you want and you don't have to get it from a direct retailer. Like you can go on eBay, you can trade it with a friend. No, no, but eBay. the problem with these ones, especially on this first issue, is that the ones on eBay are more expensive than buying the issue. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get that. Because in the issue, it's like three quid and you get both models. But I would say these magazines on the whole can be a good thing for the second-hand market yeah. as a customer because it drives in, the for prices For the general down. models, yeah, it does bring the price down slightly. So there, there's a guy uh, who actually is a trader at Warboot that brings loads of sprues of models and they're clearly from like those magazines and on those you still get a good deal on them and like i've seen them sealed the seal because well, they've got them for super cheap so yeah. they can afford to sell them at under market rate yeah and then and that drives money. the whole yeah. price down yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah I, I all in all like they i think whether you subscribe to it or not or whatever like there's still lots of positive things that, that, that did come out of obviously these things being run like you know, um, I think like with anything, I like just don't get caught up in the FOMO of it all. Yeah, and yeah. Think, yeah. say to yourself, like, am I actually saving money or am I just spending money on stuff I didn't want? Yeah. On the masquerade of it's a good deal. Yeah. yeah. I'm saving money. It's like, you know, you're spending money on stuff you didn't want. Yeah. yeah. So that's right. the way I look at it. I think buy individual issues. If you see one that you like, yeah. go from there. Yeah. yeah. I think that is my recommendation as well. Okay, so if you're a long-term listener of the show, you'll know that we do these monthly painting challenges here on Paint Perspective in our Discord community. And the idea is that every single month we have a theme and then people can hopefully encourage everyone to paint something new, something different. And we like a tactical rule bend with how we pitch these. We've had some creative... It's, it's very creative Some ones, creative yeah. ones before. Um, and we, all of these have like a stupid pun name for every month. So August... They're not all stupid, to be fair. Some of them are pretty rough, Joe. Some of them Let's are. be honest. Oh, that- 
Julian is in the past. <laughs> <laughs> so last month, month of August, was solar or gazillia. And the theme for that was to paint anything human or humanoid. Yeah, we didn't want to Zero pigeon texture. it just into solar, solar or gazillia. Yeah. So we just said anything kind of humanoid within Warhammer. Either universe, I suppose. But. Exactly. And uh, people heard that and they thought, brilliant, Space Marines round two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because we had uh, July was due Legion, which was you could paint any Space Marine stuff. So people went, oh, Space Marines, brilliant. Oh, so yeah. this, this was largely more Space Marines. However, there were some very, uh, very, very fun tactical rule bends in here. And some people that did follow the rules, so to speak. Uh, should we go through some of our favorites? We'll put all of them on screen. Yeah, I do want to... Um, I do want to just give a uh, special shout out to Will, who put a Dreadnought in. <laughs> um, Classic human. And said, I think there's something human in here, which I guess works. It was human at one point. It was, human at one was point. humanoid at one point. Yep. Um, the model looks really cool as well. But the one, I, I did, the one that I would say followed the rules and I wanted to shout out um, was Derek the Dodo posted his first proper AOS model that he's ever finished and it looks sick. It's just a really cool model that I like as well. I can't remember where it's from though. Um, I think it's from like Curse City or something. It's one of those ones. It's that. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, yeah. yeah, really cool. Blade looks sick um, and follows the rules because that is a human. Nice. As far as I can tell, that is a human. I am going to do a special mention also because this one is brilliant. Not only because it was put together in less than a morning, but at the same time, it's just hilarious and nods to IP and law quite well. Uh, Stephen Morris for the flaming boots of the plasma, <laughs> the plasma, the, the plasma guards. Look, looking at the date that this was submitted, this just screams doing your uh, your homework, homework project class, the night before. before. <laughs> yeah, totally forgot anything. I forgot we had that presentation that we were supposed to be doing for the last three months at school tomorrow. Hang on, let me slap that together. A bit yeah. of poster board. Well, the community loved it, and uh, Steve was. I totally forgot to do anything. So this morning I made this. Never give a plasma gun to a guardsman. That's brilliant. brilliant. But my actual choice. Uh, uh, is from Charlie um, Countersunk, who done an amazing uh, uh, female Inquisitor. Really old model, and uh, yeah, absolutely love that one. Okay, well, my honourable mention is uh, Harp ninety eight, who uh, just decided done a James. Really, uh, the rules don't count if you ignore them. Yeah, uh, true, so yeah. here's a tank. <laughs> yeah, I back that choice <laughs> again. Though again, there's probably humans in there. I guess. Humans in there. Arguably. Although they did say, and how do you know that? They haven't painted the humans that are inside. Well, they did say, is a tank human? Has, right. human, crew, has human crew? That's your first to say. I would have gone with, <laughs> I would have gone with, that's an admission of guilt. That is an admission of I guilt. That's why you lost. With, you almost had us. Almost had I us. I would have gone with, I've painted the, the pilot inside or something like that. Yeah. Um, but never mind. Next yeah. time. Well, uh, my, my real pick, I suppose, is a Tonton XC who's painted a uh, Krieg Guardsman. Uh, nice little paint shop. I love those models as well. And it's uh, quite a neutral palette. You're wearing sort of a similar colour palette right now, Joe. Yeah, in, in honour. In honour. Yeah. In honour of Creek. <laughs> this is my, my solar auxilia is this. Brilliant. Uh, okay. Well, well thank the you. humanoid, so not a rule bend. <laughs> um, uh, this is more of a valid entry than the tank. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Evan, who did submit for solar auxilia. If you'd like to submit to next month's monthly painting challenge, it is Tau September. We've had a lot of a lot of flack for this one because I don't people I don't think people, people don't get understand it. what Tau Sept is. Yeah, like Tau Sept is a thing. It's not Tau September. It's Tau Sept Ember. Ember. That's why it's clever. Um, although I did when we were talking about the other day. I, well, I say, uh, well, oh, I messed it up. I said it wrong. For what Tau September? Yeah, September. September. I said. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we've got September coming up. <laughs> that works as well. Okay. Uh, well, you don't have to paint just the Tau Sept scheme. It could be anything Tau. And our rules, as always, with this is you don't have to paint a whole model. It can just be like a Tau head for like some basing bits mm -hmm. from Space Marines. You could just paint just a one random sub assembly for the fun of it. The idea is we want to get people just painting new stuff you haven't painted before with the community. It's just a bit of fun. So uh, link in the description to the C Studios Discord if you're not already a member. It's completely free. And uh, you can submit uh, over there. Look forward to seeing your entries. Rule bends, please. Yes. Yeah, we do encourage bending the rules. 100%. If you're listening to this podcast, there's a good chance that you're looking to take miniature painting more seriously and improve your skills. 
We're asked all the time by listeners of this podcast how you can paint like our artists here at Siege. And now you can learn how with our Siege Studios painting and sculpting classes. We teach a variety of fundamental and advanced techniques that are integral to the painting methodologies that we use here at Siege. Our day and weekend classes have been developed over eight years of teaching experience, developing painters from all skill levels in venues across the UK. You'll walk away with practical skills and techniques that you can take away and nurture so you can start seeing better results and grow as a painter. To book tickets to your local venue now before they sell out, head to the link in this episode's description or go to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please do leave it in the comments down below on YouTube or uh, likewise, send it to us on Discord. Uh, this one comes from Mike Wolf, who says, uh, regarding brush care, how many hours or sessions or projects does a good quality brush last even when caring for it? What is the average lifespan? This, it, it, I'll it take does... a breather in this one, I think. Mine, it, mine lasts forever because I hardly, hardly <laughs> use it. That's the way you do it, yeah. No, um, it, it varies. I, I've got brushes that are five years old, four years old. I've, I, they go from pot to pot, so you get brand new ones. You use them for a bit, clean them for a bit. You notice that the point... It, maybe it does depend what you mean by last I as think well. They mean, they're not going right. to turn to dust, but <laughs> they might not be like your sharpest, no, that's the most thing. They fine do, they detail do, brushes. Ultimately, you use it, friction is happening on that hair, on the brush head as you're using it. It is going to degrade the quality of the point or the brush head etc over time really i think that the better question is is how how much friction or how hard are you actually painting on the model that actually determines the, the longevity of the brush not just the cleaning the cleaning is useful obviously because it retains the, the and just like etiquette and like a yeah. bit of lottery on how good the brush you get is you're, they're handmade. Um, you're like personal preference as well yeah some people do just some people will notice the difference between a bit more of a used brush to a brand new one and they might not be as comfortable with that. So yeah. they might want to upgrade uh, sooner. Whereas some people stick with the same brush for years. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty trigger happy with demoting my brushes. Yeah. I won't get rid of them. Those become like... Base coating brushes. Not even that, but like just brushes. less detail. It's like I'm not going to use you for my, for my fourth stage edge highlights, but you might make it... You might go down to like a chunky highlight, or you might yeah. go down to yeah. like layering some finer details or blending. Or it's like so. football players as they get older. They, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're yeah. Uh, I'd say there's a lot of variables with that. I would say for me, even I, I don't paint crazy hours like I used to, but I paint probably 10, 15 hours a week, I would say. And I would say a brush probably lasts me like two to three months before I decide to demote it, so to speak. Mm. Um, and I would say just, I, I, knowing you, I would say you're probably being more picky than the average yeah. <laughs> uh, painter. Like there, so that's a good thing to to aim. But for, I'll keep them around for like I've I've I don't think I've ever thrown a brush away. I've just got yeah. I've, I've just got a big bucket. I just put my, when yeah. they're like really gone and they're like only good for like glue. Yeah, like even then I'll still, still keep there, them. Yeah. They're still there. They're not going anywhere. Yeah. Well, I've got a brush that once it dies, I cut the cut the hair off, and and then you've got the hole at the end where the where the hair goes in the ferrule, and that's great for sculpting like big rivets and stuff like that in in sculpting. Oh, so that, that was going to be my hobby hack. Oh, it, it give up, <laughs> give up. Uh, yeah, would you say? I've, do you notice like different sizes lasting longer than others? Generally, if it's got more hair, I, th I find that they last longer. So yeah. I might, like because I'm not putting paint in the in the danger zone near the ferrule, you know. So like, if it's like it, a tiny triple zero, it's like. I feel one. like they're gone before they even start. Like, yeah. I can't, I can't use them. It's like, yeah, I don't think I've ever bought like a, literally, yeah, like triple zero. That well, we've been over this before. That brush sizes are like just completely made up by manufacturer to manufacturer. So yeah. one man's I don't know. I, mean, I don't think That's I've it. ever. Wait, I didn't finish my sentence. Okay, I don't think I've ever bought one that like even felt like it was going to do what I thought it was going to do. Do you right. know what I mean? Like it's, it, they're so small and there's hardly anything there Yeah, that it feels like there's not even a point. I feel some, like there's I feel not like, even enough hair for there to be a point. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like I feel like from the time I leave the wet palette to the time that my hand moves to the model, the brush is already You've dry. dried it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah fair. Okay. Uh, well, hobby hacks is our weekly tradition on the podcast where we share a little hobby hack with you. Look at him. Look at him getting ready. Flexing. I've got one. I've got one. The hobby hack ha flex. Hobby <laughs> hacks is our weekly tradition where we share a little quick tip at the end of the podcast with you uh, that you can hopefully implement into your painting because we know some of you like to paint along while you listen. Joe's been brewing on this for, for weeks. <laughs> it's so rubbish as well. <laughs> 
Joe, no, we asked, on, we asked Joe on. to come up. We it's, asked not Joe, rubbish, it's not rubbish because I didn't come up with it. But the, the, so we, we asked you to come up with a hobby hack about three weeks ago. Yeah. And you said you had a brilliant one. I had one. And then you forgot I, it. I thought of one and I, and I remember thinking of it because it was in conversation in the office and I thought of it and I was like, that'd be a good hobby hack. Um, and then I just didn't write it down or anything. I forgot. And then I remembered it. So now I have the hobby hack. Okay. We're all very excited for it. Come on, Jay. Don't let us down. Just to preface, because I know George is hot on this stuff. I didn't invent this. <laughs> um, Borrowed hack. <laughs> this is something that came up in conversation with a client. And then I kind of thought of it. I kind of adapted it to how it could work for your personal hobby. And I think it's a good idea. And I am going to do it if I ever plan on doing this stuff. Because I've never heard of anyone. I'm going to do it if I ever plan on doing it. Well, wait, right. wait till you see. Right, no, okay. no. If I ever plan on, it's about magnetizing. So if I ever plan on magnetizing, oh, okay. I'm going to do this. Okay. Um. Because I've brought this into the studio now. This is now a thing that we are doing. So I've never seen anyone talk about the best ways to keep track of your different like polarities and stuff. Right. So we obviously get different commissions. And maybe we send a, an army back to a client and then a year later we're working on it again and it's got magnetizing and they've been having to maybe like send an arm back so that we can... Because you want them to all be interchangeable. Yeah, and you don't yeah. Want repelling each other. Yeah. And I was chatting with a client. Oh God, I should have written down that. No, it's like a regular client as well, but I can't remember which one. And um, uh, it might have been Matt actually who listens to the podcast. I don't want to say full names, but... Um, and he sent over, we're doing a, a new phase for his army. And he sent over a picture of one of those like old, like, I, I think his one is actually like hobby based accessory with like a North and South magnet. You know, like what you oh, get like a horseshoe school. thing, not like a horseshoe in like a, uh, it looks like a Jenga piece. Okay. Um, is it colored? Yeah. With like the halves, the North and South red right. and red and blue. blue. Yeah. And he like, had his weapon stuck on top of it. And he was like, there you go. Like, can you, can you match that? And I was like, that's brilliant. Why not just have, so I bought, we, we bought a load of little ones that we're now going to keep. Oh, that is, that is a good idea. So like yeah. now just on my hobby desk, I've got, I've bought them. I've got one, like a little, it's a little North you've got, and you've South. You've got a magnet like, for your magnets. Little North and South magnet thing. And you just decide basically whenever you're magnetizing what polarity you want the um, body to be and what polarity you want the arm and weapon or whatever to be. And I guess you could write it down in your journal. And, or well, you just well. know. You yeah. ju I think you just know for whatever project you're doing, um, the body is going to be Blue. north and the arm weapon is going to be south and you've just got that thing on your desk and you just check it every time and you're done you don't have to go and get your old models you don't have to it's, don't, it's not different between your armies i think that's good and we're now using that in that is in good. Here. We've, like got, we've got a bunch of them so obviously it was matt that sparked that uh that thing but i, I did kind of think how could you use it personally rather than because obviously that's because he's got the models and we we don't physically have the models. That's why he's done that yep. for us. I think he used a, an actual like tool, like we've spoke about hobby gadgets and stuff before. And I kind of thought, well, you probably don't need an actual official tool. You could probably just buy those old like school magnets. Um, See, so yeah, never, I've never seen one of those things. And when I saw that blue and red thing, I thought it was some kind of sweet or something on your desk. What? Like, I didn't know. I've what seen it was. a magnet. No, no. <laughs> I've seen a magnet. I meant the magnet check or the blue and red. It's got half red, half blue. So when you were at school and you had like magnets, they weren't the little colour coded things? No. Really? No. I didn't have those at school. Magnets How old are you? Magnets, magnets weren't around, around then. <laughs> magnets, <laughs> magnets weren't invented when I was at school. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's, I think that's pretty good. Um, no, I like it. You it's can good. Always, no, good. always have consistent magnetising. No, it's good. There you go. I like so that. That's better than like slate that. is slate, yeah. if you ask me. I think that's Always not the worst one. Always has to have the layup, doesn't he? That's like, not the worst one. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. I've got another one. Is that, one is that well. your benchmark for hobby hacks? Is it's not the worst one we've ever had, so it's a winner? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, you want, um, do you want to drop another one? No, no, no. I'm saving it. Oh, you're saving that one? Yeah, yeah. Well, please feel free to forget that one so in they're four like, or five months like, we can uh, finally hear it. They're like buses. Like two, uh, you wait ages for one for me, <laughs> and then two come along at once. Brilliant. Um, yeah. I think it's a good one to end on. No, no, I like it. You can get them really cheap as well. Amazon, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Sweet. Well, uh, on that note, we're going to jump over into the post show now. So if you're watching on YouTube and you're not aware, uh, over on our Patreon, we do extended versions of this podcast and also ad free as well. 
uh, at the end of every episode that you see on YouTube, we do like a post show, uh, 20, 30 minutes. We talk about some little extra bonus content. Uh, so check the link in the description of this episode. And you'll also gain access to our hundreds of PDF tutorials, which are updated every single week and a lot of other benefits as well. So we encourage you to check that out. Uh, otherwise, we will see you next week. Uh, one thing that I thought would be cool to do for this post show, mm -hmm. we've got some some other interests outside of Warhammer and stuff, but we was only talking about Warhammer and stuff. Mm -hmm. I thought it'd be cool to dive into a little bit of our like other hobbies, maybe ones we're yeah. currently doing or ones we've dabbled with in the past. Yeah.